Previously on Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's like, it's like I'm your captive. My captive? What are you saying? Oh my, I'm suddenly really flustered. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I, I like, I like this very much. <laughs> Now, now onwards, onwards class, class to, to war! war! <laughs> <laughs> ha! Why, Why fight, fight when I can pay, pay people, people to fight, fight for me? Ha 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 ha! Hello! Sneako B, back with some more Fire Emblem Three Houses. When we last left off, oh my god, our freaking Dimitri is back from the demon dead, baby. I mean, a nice sweet Dimitri, not, not murder, burning the eternal flames, Dimitri. And uh, I just, well, one couldn't be happier. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. He's not, he's not really going to be totally back. I mean, he's, there's just no way, right? I saw, like, as mentioned this, I, I was sort of, I was playing it up a bit, but I know he's not really just like, oh, he's just back to normal. Like all that, all that nice side of him we saw before. Yeah, it's, it's all we're going to see now. Nothing about the bloodthirstiness and trying to mirror Elgard. Everything's good. At least I don't expect it to happen. You know, I don't. And I, honestly, realistically, it shouldn't happen, right? He's 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 done a lot of fucked up shit. He's been messed up for a long time. And you guys even talked about how back then a lot of it probably was him trying to repress it, right? There, there's a good side of him, but he always have ha has had this darkness in him, and it wasn't really a visible until things started to get really tough, right? Things started to hit, hit too close to home, and then it just started to eke out, slowly but surely. I'll actually be curious to see if his battle quotes uh, change now. I, I think they probably will, because his other ones were very pessimistic. I still hope we get ones like, see you in the eternal flames. <laughs> oh, it's still so badass. Uh eventually, I too will fall. Like, I, I bet that one will, we probably won't hear that one anymore, because now he's he sort of accepted this side of him, right? Now he he doesn't seem like he just wants to, he's okay with dying. If I had to compare it to anything, actually, I'd probably compare it to sort of like what Kenshin was, Maroni Kenshin. It was kind of the arc that he went through with this whole Batosai, like, dark side, right? Where he was like, just this crazy, crazy killer. Um, but like, he, when he manages to put that aside once he finally learns to actually like, care about his own life, right? He knows there are people that care about him and love him and he doesn't, if he dies, they would be very sad. And he, once he realizes that, like, I can't, my life is valuable, I can't die. That's when he, like, puts that side behind him. And I think it's sort of similar with Dimitri here. Like, realizing that he does have value. And there are people that do care whether he lives or dies. Um, I did see some of you guys talk about how, like, uh, some people weren't crazy about how, like, how they went about it. Um, with, like, Rodriguez and stuff. And I, I will admit, like, I mean, it was pretty... It was typical, right? It was a typical thing like, oh, I jumped down the blade, stopped it. Oh, it's so dramatic and stuff. And uh, I mean, I, I will say like, I was trying to think about from a writing standpoint, this was a hard thing. This is a hard thing to be able to convincingly convey that a transformation, right? Like for, of Dimitri going back to being at least more like his old self, right? And putting the darkness behind him. Like it, that that was a probably very hard for the writers to come up with like a, a way that was relatively believable and and not seeming either forced or just kind of stereotypical right because it has to be something dramatic it can't be something subtle it has to be something dramatic it has to check a number of boxes of like okay it's got to be somebody Demetrius close to it has to have been his fault you know like has to have been a moment there he was about to die like and just like a number of things and it it felt like I mean, this was probably one of the better ways he could have done it i still think it was still a good scene but it, i definitely agree you know it was it wasn't anything like, like mind blowing, right? Not like some other points of writing in the game where I'm like, holy shit, like this is some crazy stuff, which a lot of it is really the character interactions. Um, some of the main story beats can get a little, a little tropey, but I do get it. In all honesty, in like, I don't know if there's any way they could have done that scene though and had it not seem flawed in some way because Dimitri was so fucked up, you know? Like so fucked up. I, I don't know. I don't know if you really could realistically bring somebody back from where he was, unfortunately. I mean, it's a pessimistic way of thinking about it, but I mean, he was, I mean, he was messed up, man. But unfortunately the game kind of calls for him to come back, right? Because he's got all these supports and stuff. And I mean, if he just stays this way, it's like, there's no real progress either. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think they did a, a decent enough job of it. I'm glad to have him back. And I still think it was to an extent believable. You know, I, I do. I think it, I still think it could work. Anyway, uh, last episode, uh, Mads and Zero said, <laughs> Claude bitterly, this is a pretty bad class reunion. Edelgar bitterly, 
We're not fighting as classmates any longer. Dimitri, I'll kill every last one of them. <laughs> Busily, hmm. Hope I picked the right side here. You okay there, Dimitri, buddy? Yeah, it's okay. Take your time. <laughs> oh my God. You guys told me. So that line from Dimitri apparently has been memed to fucking hell and back. And the reason is because in the initial like trailers they showed of the game, they showed like the, the pre time skip versions of everybody, right? And Dimitri seemed like a swell, nice guy. Only for the next trailer where they finally revealed the post time skip uh, everybody, right? Including Dimitri. Only for him to suddenly just be like, I will kill every last one of them. And apparently that was actually a big, you guys have talked about how there was a big selling point, right? With the, the time skip. That was one of them. It's just seeing that, like what could have transformed Dimitri into the person he became, right? This monster, like could be this super nice guy. Suddenly he's a fucking demon going full Arthas. <laughs> I, I get it. I see. That's, that's pretty funny. And the funny thing was I actually saw that trailer, but I didn't, one, I didn't remember it or like retain any of it because I didn't, initially plan to play this game so uh and I, I mean i didn't see any of the stuff that came beforehand so it would have the the joke would have been lost on me anyway but <laughs> uh mads is zero thank you so much for your hilarious comment as for that reason you are comment today <laughs> i will say goddamn uh chris hackney is, is that his name the guy just dimitri like he is he is on like i feel like a another level here you know like, i think the voice acting in this game overall is really really good there are a few that aren't like the best like cyril's is all right uh mercedes again i hear that i just hear samugi but i also don't think that voice is like hers like amazing ingrid's is okay a little she could be a little uh, i don't know maybe a little too stone-faced like she doesn't really like emote quite enough or something um, but then you have like other ones like Demetrius is fucking amazing. Sylvanas is amazing. Felix is amazing. Bernie's is amazing. Manuel and Hahnemann are really amazing. Sedis is fucking amazing as well. Oh my God. Sedis is so good. And that's it. I don't think there are any duds. Like none of them are duds. They're just like, it, it's just like comparing like the guys that were like good and the guys that were like fucking godlike. And that scene you actually told me apparently where he was uh, crying over Rodriguez's death. Like apparently Chris Hackney actually got really emotional in that, that scene, which really helped to sell that that moment. I mean, God damn it. He really he does. He just sounds like he's living this shit and it is, it, uh, mm, it's palpable. I love it. Love listening to him say some shit. Oh, Annette, of course. I got, I can't mention, forget Annette, which doesn't surprise me at all. Right. Usually people who, it's, it's, it's interesting how there's sort of like a synonymous, like, uh, connection between people who can act really well and people who can sing like the, it, like it kind of go hand in hand, weirdly enough. Like if you're a good, if you're an actor, you tend to be a, a decent singer too and vice versa. Yeah, and Annette was fantastic. You guys also brought, brought about how actually uh, hands, the, the extending of the hand to Dimitri is actually, uh, is like a big thing in this game. Like hands is like a big symbolism and it represents different things on different routes of the game, which is pretty fucking cool. Like, see, it's sh that shit like that, you know? You actually have like legit symbolism in the game. That's like, that's, that's some really good writing. Also, you guys said apparently the, uh, uh, Annette and Felix uh, ship is actually it, it's its ship name is called Netflix, and I fucking love that. <laughs> it's the greatest ship name ever. And if, if that shit isn't enough to convince you, this this is a match made in heaven, and I don't know what is. All right, <laughs> Netflix. I fucking love that. They are gonna Netflix and chill those two. Mm, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah, you actually guys, you guys actually point out during that that scene with Demetrius saying kill every last one of them. I actually apparently laughed at that scene. <laughs> I don't remember. I got to go back and watch that. I think did I ever post it to YouTube. Fuck. I don't know if I did. Actually, maybe I didn't. I don't know. It might not even be on YouTube. It's definitely not going to be on Twitch anymore because they like they removed stuff after like a couple of months there and that was <laughs> like a year ago. But, all right. So we've got now a shit ton of freaking Dimitri supports. Finally, the man is finally ready to bond with people. Thank God. Oh, Lord. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see like how is he gonna I me mean, because I couldn't have gotten I think most of these uh, Until the time skip I think I, I think so some, some of these might have like maybe the ones with Ash and Sylvain like the B ranks they might be uh, Pre time skip so he might seem more normal there. Uh, I'm curious to see the ones that like had to be post time skip like how will he act? Will he still be like like uh, like he'll still have that kind of raspy voice? I can't imagine that they would have gone through and changed every one of these if you decide to do them post time skip I, I, I don't i don't know like i can kind of hard, hard to tell like i can tell cyril's voice actor like she puts on a bit of a voice in his older 
scenes, right? And like the post time skip scenes. And I can't tell if he's actually doing that same voice for the, the post time skip supports, even though I think some of them he probably could have done earlier. If it is, then that is a stupidly impressive level of detail. Um, all right, I guess we'll start from the top here. Uh, Ash. Your Highness, sorry, I mean, Dimitri, would you, um, do you want to train together today? Shut up, Ash. See you in the eternal <laughs> Oh, well, he's not better after all, I guess. And now Ash is going to proceed to kill everybody in our house and all these supports. <laughs> That's how every one of his ends. You really shouldn't have done my supports, Professor. Yeah, clearly not. Damn. Uh, mistake on my part. Guess I probably should have taken that uh, battle vantage and uh, battalion's wrath off you. And also the scythe of the death knight. Got you a little too bloodthirsty, didn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. I just I just don't know my own strength. Yeah, I know. Ash, of course. I'm glad you asked. Meet me at the training ground this evening after we've finished our tasks for the day. I'll be waiting. Oh, God. It's, all right, I'm not going to lie. This is a little weird. It's a little weird down here. And Dimitri just talked normal. <laughs> Meet me at the training ground this evening. I have finished our tasks for the day. I'll be waiting. I'm super excited for our date. And afterward, let's plan on dinner. We'll certainly have worked up an appetite. Oh, yes, I suppose. Uh, I mean, sure. It'd be... That is... Uh, it would be my pleasure to... Uh, <laughs> Oh, come on, Ash. With you? I mean, I, I uh, um... Ash. Come on. I'm sorry, Your Highness. I'm just no good at this. I'll do my best to improve. Are you still worrying over what I said to you before? I'm trying to A billion do this years last, ago? But it's just completely against my nature. Trust me, I understand the urge to show respect where it is due. However, that is not the case here. Yes, I was brought up in a different family and raised in a different way, but otherwise, you and I are the same. I uh, definitely didn't change his voice that for this, these sense, scenes. Your Highness. But I just can't bring myself to speak to you in such a casual way. Sure, when you get right down to it, royalty like you and common folk like me, we're all just people. But the common folk still rely on the nobility to keep the peace and to keep them safe. Commoners pay the price for that in taxes and respect. That's what Lenato says. Hmm. I suppose I can understand that point of view. But the flaw in your logic is that I am not officially the king just yet. But that's not all there is to it. Hmm? I also respect you as a person. You carry the weight of the whole kingdom on your shoulders. You're a faultless warrior, and you're always so kind to your allies. Even me. Well, at least you have been for the past five minutes. <laughs> On all accounts, I can say the same of you. But you also have a strong heart. I can't say that about myself. No matter the circumstance, you are never drawn toward darkness. That mindset of yours has done me well on countless occasions. Well, I... I do my best. So I guess, mutual respect between us is what's really the most appropriate. Precisely. Which means there's never any need to be nervous or uncomfortable around one another. No matter how intimidating I may look. It seems we may have circled back to where we started with this conversation. But let's at least agree that we both should learn to bend a bit. How's that sound? All right. Let's start from the beginning, then. Would you like to train with me today, Your Highness? No, fuck off. Of course, Ash. Come at me with everything you've got. You better bring your A-game, boy. <laughs> That was nice. Again, I, I have a feeling I probably could have seen that one before, and I'm gonna bet it the same as with Sylvain here. Uh, your highness? Why are you in my room? Sorry, I need to hide in here, just for a while. I'll have you know this is all your fault. <laughs> hide? From who? Is it the Empire? No, it's a girl. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. It's a what? It's a what? This is all because of your insistence that I go and ask a girl out. <laughs> you didn't give her a dagger, did you? Is that why you're hiding? Oh my Does god. A dagger, Dimitri? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, God, I didn't do that again. Stupid do you think I am? First time, shame on you. Second time, still shame on you. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, still shame on you. Seventh time, though, then definitely shame on me. I mean, I have the dagger right here. I was going to give it to her, but then I remembered. Look. You kept true to your promise to improve your behavior. So I felt it was only right to make good on my side of the bargain, too. 
You invited a girl to dinner, and now she's chasing you around. What's the big deal? Unless... Did you use one of my pickup lines? Those words are dangerous in the wrong hand. <laughs> With me, people know a line's a line and I'm joking. But you, nobody's ever accused you of being funny. <laughs> I clearly underestimated the difficulty of the task. But what do I do now? Relax, your highness. Relax. I'll sort this whole thing out real easy. All we have to do is figure out how to make this girl lose interest in you. I'll just go over there and use my old Sylvanic charm. I'm like, hey there, girl, you look fine today. Oh, you just get me, Sylvanic. You just get like the guys that want to fuck. Oh my god, I think I found my soulmate. Dude, 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 dude. And making girls lose interest is what I'm best at. You just wait right there, and I'll fix everything. It was my naivete that brought this about. I cannot place this immense burden on your shoulders. This is no job for an amateur. You need a professional's help. <laughs> Trying to do everything professional yourself fuck has up. never served you so well. So just leave this to the master. Even the dagger incident could have been avoided if you had just talked with me beforehand. There wasn't time for consultation. I only learned she was leaving on the day of her departure. Whatever you say. <laughs> the point is, you need to learn to rely on me for these types of things in the future. For now, I got this. And if I ever need help with something you know how to help with, then maybe you can do the same for me. Is it murdering things? I'm very good at that. Sylvain. Very well. When that time comes, I promise to help you as best I can. A knight of Fargus never goes back on his word. Isn't that right? You're a good man, Sylvain. I'm sorry to do this to you. Best of luck. Please, your highness. I've spent years honing my skills for just this situation. Watch and learn. Please show it. Damn it, he's gonna lay now. Oh, I wanna see this shit. Watch your pro at work. <laughs> yeah, those are definitely ones I'm pretty sure I could have done before. Some of these other ones, I, I the A ranks, I'm sure I probably couldn't. The problem is I don't think I had really any under lock and key before this moment, so. Um Alright, well, Mercedes part two of their B rank, so. Maybe. You've been spending a lot of time at the training ground, Mercedes. As far as swordsmanship goes, you're like a whole new person. Oh god, that's right. Was he trying Thank to use you. use a sword? I have such a great time when you teach me that improving comes naturally. You've only cut me 30 times instead of the usual 80. It's all because of your own hard work. Compared to you, I Oh, that's right. Shouldn't be so disappointed in yourself. Do you mean to to sell? Just need to keep at it. Well, yeah. you can hold a needle and thread without breaking anything now. <laughs> that's <laughs> You're too strong for your own good, Dimitri. <laughs> That's a big step. When we started, you couldn't even hold a pair of scissors without twisting them apart. True. I'm sorry for being such a burden. You're no bother at all. I like sewing with you. It reminds me of when I was young and my mother taught me how to sew. My mother would sit with my brother and me, and we'd all sew together. Ah, oh, I really miss it. Even though I was barely better than you when I started. Did your mother like to sew, Dimitri? My birth mother? From my father's accounts, she wasn't great at it either. She oh, was a beast. Of course. I forgot that the Queen of Fargus passed away long ago. Yes. I don't really remember what she was like. But I remember my stepmother. Always sitting by the window, sewing away. I'm sure she would have been happy to teach you if you had asked. She always looked so lonely when she was sewing. So unreachable. She was kind to me, yes. But when she was like that, it was hard to talk to her. I'm not certain she would have wished to teach me. I'm so sorry, Dimitri. I didn't mean to bring up such difficult memories. Don't worry about it. If I don't talk about those things sometimes, I'll risk forgetting them altogether. And that would truly be a shame. I can't remember. So, like, his stepmother is Edelgard's mother. Is that right? Is that is that it? I think it... I think? Maybe? I see. <laughs> but now I'm just going on and on about myself. Why don't you tell me more about you? More about me? Oh, goodness. I don't even know what to say. It's hard to think of something on the spot, isn't it? You could speak of your family, I suppose. You want to know more about my family? On that topic, I'm happy to oblige. In fact, I'm so glad you asked. 
It's important to think about your past and share it every now and then. This might take a while, but would you be willing to stay and listen? Of course. I will listen for as long as you wish. Dude, Demetrius is such a fucking swell guy. God damn it. I love this man so fucking much. Okay, I'm gonna imagine this is this had to have been pre or post time skip, so part one of a net a net. Your Highness, I have one more favor to ask. Is this about Gustav again? I have plenty more stories about him. But perhaps it is time for you to speak with him yourself. Yeah. This Wow, you can hear it, can't you? See that difference in his voice? That's definitely post time skip to me, Tree. Just sounds a lot gruffer, deeper. Okay. Oh, it's not about father this time. This time I wanted to ask about you. About me? I mean, I heard all about father last time, but I didn't ask about you. Ah, well, I'm afraid there is not much of interest for me to tell you. Oh, it doesn't have to be funny or interesting. That's not why I'm asking. It's just that I thought I already knew you, but I'm not sure I really do. That day when we were reunited at the monastery, I didn't know what to say to you. So I wanted to prepare some of your favorite food. I thought maybe if you ate something that you liked, you'd cheer up a little. But when I got to the kitchen, I realized I didn't even know what you like to eat. I see. Well, it's a little hard to say what my favorite is. I just don't really have any strong feelings about food. That said, you're pretty keen on sweet things, right, Annette? <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm at my happiest when I'm digging into a sweet treat. <laughs> oh, did you know there's a famous sweet shop in the capital? Yes. It often had long lines outside, didn't it? The castle guards often spoke of it. That's just like a little ball of light. The sweets were so good. They cost a fortune, but I loved them. When father was still around, we all lived as a family in the capital. Since then, I've had them only a few times. Ah, how I'd love to taste them again. Say, Annette, when this war is over, where will you go? I heard that you were close to Baron Dominic back in the Academy days. That's right. But that's not where I think I'd like to go when all of this is over. I reconnected with father, so I'd like to live with my family again, in the capital. Also, if I'm in the capital, I'll be able to see you from time to time. Right? Ah, that settles it then. We'll have to get your father working twice as hard. <laughs> Father's at a ripe old age now. I'd appreciate it if you didn't work him too hard. Oh, of course. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Aw, that was nice. Yeah, see, that sounded, that, that sounded a lot more like the post -scap, time skip Dimitri, so I mean, and it, it showed based on their dialogue that, yeah, that would not have happened pre, pre time skip. Um, actually, Gilbert and Annette are, yeah, they still have one more rank. Um, it was interesting though, I actually realized, uh, Annette though, she has one with Hanuman that still hasn't unlocked yet, so I actually haven't unlocked all the ones yet, but it still has to happen. What are you guys waiting for? I'm actually almost nervous that Gilbert or something might die. I don't know. Like that's that's kind of what I'm afraid of. Like like he's about to die or something. Like then they gotta wait for that to happen before like Hanuman and Annette can like bond and be like, oh, sorry about your dad. Or I I don't know. I'm trying to think of like what major events could happen that would have that would prevent that from uh, being unlocked by this point. All right. Uh, part two of uh, Ingrid's B rank with Dimitri. This is probably gonna be. Your Highness, I've come to apologize. I mismanaged my feelings and got carried away. I've been thinking about what might have made you say the things you did. I was so caught up in the moment and in my own feelings oh God, that's that I right. didn't think of what yours might be. That's right. I think I'm in a huge fight. It was pretty nasty, actually. No, I should be the one to apologize. I did not intend to say such things. Yeah, this is definitely pre-time skip again. I lashed out like a child. You were right to rebuke me. I am disgusted by my own inability to express myself. Will you allow me to explain? Of course. At the tragedy of Dusker, I saw countless corpses. Of course, I saw his too. Oh, that's Glass. right. Cause it, they were um, they were talking about how whether like he was worth dying for, right? Ingrid, I doubt you would have been able to see him. They were unable to bring his body back after all. He must have died an agonizing death, full of pain and regret. That is what I saw in his face. 
In that wasteland, there were no beautiful, proud deaths that could have been written about in heroic tales. Not yeah. one. I do not want you to die a death like that. Not even for the sake of loyalty or duty. A king must at times order his soldiers and knights to fight and die on his behalf. Their lives must be used for the greater good. And this is something any good king understands innately. Any king who doesn't allow people to die on his behalf is too soft to rule well. You leave me little room for argument. Have I disappointed you? No. I chose to serve you because of how you are. As your knight, I will stand by your side and uphold your soft-hearted ideals. What has changed, Ingrid? You were so obstinate the other day. I've realized that I haven't been facing a very important truth. Because of you, I can finally move on. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. I get, again, I, I kind of wish I'd seen some of these before the time skip because it is a little awkward seeing it now. Because also, and I also feel like, I mean, by this point now, it's like I understand now his feelings, like Dimitri's feelings a lot more. This is sort of back before he sort of revealed the darkness within him, you know? I feel like that would have had a bigger impact on me before the time skip. Because again, it just ties back to the, Dimitri takes on the feelings and the the, the quote unquote regrets of those who have died, right? Or at least he feels he's taking them on because the, he this is what he interprets their deaths as. Like that, like he must do something to avenge them because they would want him to do that. When in reality, I, I think most of them probably don't feel that way, right? They they wouldn't want Dimitri to, to do what he's done, to become the man that he became. Um, all right, uh, Dimitri and Raphael, part B. Uh, Dimitri, Raphael, what's the matter? You look awfully pale. I think, I think, I think I'm gonna die. What in the world happened? My, my whole body, it's stinging and aching. I've never felt anything like it. I feel weak all over. I don't have the energy to do anything. This has never happened to me before. Well, what are you waiting for? Get yourself to the infirmary. So hungry, Can't need meat. The thing is, I already tried going Oh shit, did I skip everyone? But I didn't see Manuela or the monks. I, I did, whoops. If you can't walk, I'll carry you there. This could be very serious. Dimitri, listen. If anything happens to me, I need you to take care of my little sis. Steady yourself, Raphael. Protecting your sister is a task that will fall to you alone. I'm not looking after that brat. Is that not why you wish to become a knight? At this rate, I won't even be able to fight alongside everyone else. I'm going to be completely useless. Uh, of course this happens after I spend all night training. Wait, you were training all night? Raphael, tell me exactly what sort of training you did last night. Well, first I ran all across the mountains while carrying a gigantic boulder. <laughs> then I found a big log and lifted it a few hundred times. After that, I ran 50 laps around Garrick Mach wearing heavy armor. Then I tied a rope to a barrel full of rocks and swung it around for a while. God damn it, Raphael, you're copying my workout regiment! Right. I believe I get the picture. And is this something you've been doing every night recently? I train every day. But yesterday, I decided to try out some new techniques. I took the ideas you gave me and used them to come up with a whole new regiment. I see. Raphael, listen to me very carefully. Your ailment is ordinary muscle pain. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I didn't really understand. Like, it just seemed weird that he was reacting this way. I was like, I was like, okay, that's just a funny. Story. No, the point is that he's, he's been so strong for most of his life. Right. And like regular workouts, but he's, he never pushed himself to the, the point of exhaustion. And th th that's right. That's right. The last thing they were talking about was he was taking workout his workout regimen based off of what Dimitri told him, the stuff that he could do, right? Because Dimitri's a fucking tank, right? So now, now Raphael's trying to do it, and he's like, he actually can't keep up. But this is like the first time this has ever happened to him. Muscle pain? I don't understand. After a training session like that, even my muscles would probably be aching. Didn't I tell you not to push yourself too hard? Wait, wait, wait. If this is muscle pain, 
Does that mean I hurt my muscles? <laughs> well, you caused them to hurt, sure, but that doesn't mean. Just, were you just like a diesel ass baby, Raphael? I can't believe I was so mean to my muscles. I need to make it up to them. I gotta go eat some food so my muscles can get the nutrition they need. And I can't waste any more time talking about it. Raphael's gonna come back. He's now just gonna be like even more jacked. <laughs> Dimitri, you can't go believe this, dude. I ate some food and made most so happy. They're not the fucking bulging. <laughs> oh dear. Hold on. What happened to your muscle pain? And if you eat too much, you'll give yourself a stomach ache. Uh oh. He's headed straight for the stairs. I thought he could hardly walk with his muscles in that state. My muscles! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my leg! My leg! Let this be a lesson to you, Raphael. There are times when even your muscles can betray you. Wah, wah. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. I love it because Dimitri, like, he's much more lean than Raphael is. And yes, it's still showing that his, like, his regiment is, like, like, what, what were you like? Like, are you like a son of Zeus, Dimitri? Like, you have some god blood in you? Um, anyway, like, his shit is, is too tough for Raphael. Um, all right, Marianne and Dimitri A rank. Ooh, this might be a good one. So, I'm sure, again, this is probably post time skip, so. Hmm, spared again. So it would seem. I told you that you were extraordinarily lucky. It, it really is amazing. Like, that's a testament to some serious voice acting. Like, that his voice can change so very subtly, but enough that you could tell there's a difference. So like, it doesn't sound like he's like a different character, right? Like, it's not like going from the Kamina voice to the Ace voice or something, you know? Like, it, it's a very subtle difference, subtle tone change to, to show his, the difference between his pre and his post time skip, but still sounds like Dimitri. And it's just like, that's a testament to his, his voice acting ability. Sometimes I think that must be true. Why me? Is this the goddess's way of telling me to make something of myself? There are so many others who are much more deserving of life. I often think the same of myself, especially after battles where many lives were lost. But I must go on living. I cannot give in to death so readily. Yeah. It is my duty to atone for my sins and to pay for the lives I've taken. I suppose that must be why the goddess allows me to live on. Is there a reason she allows me to live? Only you can know that. But I believe there is a reason. Marianne, life is difficult. It is a burden. It feels terrible to continue standing when so many others had to fall. If that is so, then carry on as you are. There is no need for you to force yourself to smile as your soul bleeds. But please, whatever you do, do not give up on yourself or your precious life. What do you mean? If you were to die, I would be devastated. <laughs> you never have been easy to read. Is that so? Everyone says that I need to cheer up, but you may be the first person to tell me not to. Your life must also be difficult for you to understand my position. So it is. I often feel I am not strong enough to live it. I think our difficulties have brought us closer together. Do you? Absolutely. <laughs> Please, Dimitri, promise you'll live through this war and long after. Oh my god, that was... Wait, let me say that again. Was that... Yes, that was blushing post-time skip, Dimitri. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I need fan art of this. I don't know what I'd do with myself if we lost you. As long as you are carrying on, I have yet another reason to carry on myself. I promise to the goddess of Fotlan that I will never give you cause to despair. Ooh. Wow, they really that was a they really, that laid it on pretty thick with that one. But they have a lot in common, you know, like that was interesting. That just that they both have that sort of feeling of like the temptation to give up on life, right? And this, that sort of actually was kind of brought them together in a weird way. Aw. That was nice though. I liked that. I could I could definitely see them being together and I mean, if I can't be with him, I would, you know, I think I'd be all right with Marianne being with him. <laughs> Interesting, though. He has a... God, Demetrius, uh, two-parter with, uh, on A rank for, with Flayne. Hmm. Um, all right. B part. Why are you out and about so late, Dimitri? Ah, uh, hello, Flayne. I could ask you the same thing. Me? 
I was feeling restless and came here to think. I see. I'm here for the same reason. <laughs> How funny. But are you feeling well? You look fairly pale. It's just how I look all the time now. It's nothing. I just have a bit of a headache. Oh my. Headaches are quite troublesome, are they not? I am sure it will subside soon. Actually, I am quite talented when it comes to healing magic. If you will allow me, I will have you feeling better in no time. What? Healing magic? No, fuck that. That's a gameplay mechanic, not a story thing. <laughs> Otherwise, we could have used that to save Enrique. Uh, fucking... Pizzoli's dad, whatever his name was. Fuck him. That's kind of you, but I'm fine. But why not? Have I offended you somehow? This headache is something I've dealt with for a while now. Ever since my family and friends were murdered before my eyes. Yeah, I think again, I think this was also pre-time skip. Because like a lot of this would have been like, mm, I wish I'd managed to see some of this shit before that. But it would have been a lot more like, really? Like, ooh, like again, would have big foreshadowing I must never forget that day I must never allow their deaths to be forgotten I feel this headache is a reminder of sorts of those I failed to protect and of their murderers who still roam free I see that would explain your somber demeanor still I do not agree with all you are saying I feel that if I were your father or any mm. of your dear friends whom you lost I would want you to let go of me eventually. Yeah. Aww. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is... They wouldn't want this of him, but Dimitri puts this on himself. I would never want someone whom I care deeply for to be pained by the loss of me for eternity. And I doubt they would want that either. Perhaps. Unfortunately, they have left this world, so I can no longer ask their preference. We cannot ask them directly, but we can imagine how they might have felt. You know who they were as people. As for me, if I am ever to be but a memory in your future, I want you to remember me in a way that brings you joy. I would want you to smile when you recalled me, to feel warmed by the notion that I cherished your company. You know, seeing Flane and like now knowing that she's St. Sethleen, right? And knowing the, of course, that St. Sethleen was such a proponent of peace, you know? It does really kind of make you look at Flane a, a bit differently. So in, in moments like this, where you really see her maturity, too. I cannot imagine I am the only one who feels this way. Surely, anyone who loved another would wish only for their peace and happiness. Wish you told me that a few years ago. <laughs> I must apologize. I was out of line, clearly. <laughs> Forgot this damn eye patch. Damn it, Nico. Sorry. I must get some rest now. Please do not stay up too late yourself. Good night, Flane. And thank you. Hmm. Ooh, interesting. I'll be curious to see then, because I think that was the thing that would have been pre-skip time skip. Now, what will she say to him after the time skip, right? Or a, you know, had to happen after that, and when he's already after he's already done all the things that he's done, right? I'll be curious. Um. Okay, Gilbert. This one might not be. This one might actually be post time skip. I'm not sure. Gilberts were kind of weird. Your Highness. It falls to me once more to instruct you in the ways of battle. It does not befit a leader to fight on the front lines. I would ask that you refrain from such conduct in the future. I have not had to weather your lectures in many a year, and here I thought you were avoiding me. That is a separate matter. You have a duty to consider the value of your own life. Your words ring true, of course. I admit, I was a bit careless out there. However, I have always been a man who is good for nothing but war. To best support our cause, I must carve a path through the battlefield with my own hands. I truly believe that will lead us to victory. Why the dark expression, Gustav? Do my words trouble you so? You remind me of your father. His Majesty once said the same thing more than a decade ago, during the Northern Campaign. In you, I see his manner and I hear his words. You grow more like him with each day's passing. And in you, I am reminded of my failure and my duty to him. I do not wish to speak of that matter. As I said before, I feel no resentment toward you. Even so, you have changed since that fateful day, your highness. Perhaps too much. I worry that in your pain, 
You have locked away your true feelings. Your passion is dulled, and your vigor faded. You want to hear my true feelings, Gustav? Then let me ask you this. Why did you save my life that day? Why did you not allow me to die along with the others? If you truly wish to atone for your sins, then take my life, here and now. You would ask me to perform the unthinkable. You are the future of Fargus. Your kingdom needs you alive. That I was able to save you is my only sense of salvation. Your Highness, I repeat myself. Consider the value of your own life. If you continue risking all, be it on the battlefield or by issuing mad orders such as this, I will be forced to save you from yourself. I see. So, you will continue to protect and serve me, will you? In that case, when I assume the throne, I will order you to work for me in the kingdom. Your Highness, no, please. <laughs> My father would be happy to see such a day. Perhaps I will ask you to instruct me further in the ways of battle, when that time comes. I think he was clearly testing him there a bit. If I wish to atone for my sins, I must take your life? Deception has never been your strong suit, Dimitri. Or do you think I cannot see? You must know I would take my own life before I let anyone harm you. Damn, that was a really good scene. That was a really good scene. I can't tell if that would have been... I think that probably would have pre-time skip actually as well. I think. Um, but just show also Dimitri's like... I mean, I, I think he was testing him, but I also do think there was a, a tinge of how he really felt. Like, why didn't you leave me to die there? Like, why do I have to be the one to carry everybody's burden, right? Uh, the burden of everybody else's death. Um, all right. Uh, first part of Alois here. Uh, be right. Mm. We should have been more careful. Those monsters really got the better of us. The only monster here is me. <laughs> okay, post time skip, Dimitri. Hmm, I think it's probably pre time skip. <laughs> I must apologize, Alois. If only I had paid closer attention. No, no, it, it's all right. We've got more important things to do than dwell on our mistakes. Ah, it hurts. I don't want to die yet. <laughs> oh god, can't keep a coon. Oh wait, you're not can't keep a coon. <laughs> Just drop his body. Ugh. How did it come to this? Indeed. With morale this low, we may yet have trouble making it back to the monastery. We weren't expecting that attack after all. It gave us a nasty shock. So we can't just leave. The knights could use some inspiration. I'll Listen tell a up, joke. Everyone. We're going to carve ourselves a safe path back home to Garigmach Monastery. But first, I want you all to hear me out. Alois, what exactly are you? A long time ago, Captain Gerald and I defended a small village from a band of thieves. After we defeated those hoodlums, the captain observed how ugly they were. Such hideousness ought to be illegal, he said. If it were up to me, I would have banned it. God damn it, Alois! Then he walked up to the leader of the village and handed over a big bag of coins. A gift from the thieves, he said. They were dying to give it to you. Sir, I'm not sure this is the time for- God damn it. <laughs> I love Dimitri so much. That's right. Because they're part C. Some of these have been, been so long since I've seen them, so it was hard to remember. That's but that's right. They were he was telling jokes to Dimitri and he laughed and he, he was like he's like, You thought it was funny? Oh oh goodness, no. No, it was so unfunny, it was actually funny. Hmm? Oh Louise. How do you come up with those jokes? <laughs> that last one was positively hilarious. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a natural. <laughs> I love jokes about death. <laughs> this is... I don't even know what to think right now. <laughs> They're so confused. They're like, never heard Dimitri laugh before. I'm scared. 
I peed myself. I guess we should just join in. <laughs> uh, Demetrius the best, guys. He's the fucking best. All right, that's all the ones we have right now. We have one for me and him, of course. And it's not going to be romantic, because why would it? Actually, no, it probably will be romantic, but I can't do anything with it. It's going to be the gayest A rank ever, and it's going to be like, Professor, I love you, and I you. I wish for you to make love to me, and I you. Okay, no homo, and then he just runs away, and it's gone. Uh, all right, uh, to do, and Sylvain, Parpy, oh, and Gilbert, Parpy, and Shamir, Parpy. All right, Sylvain. Oh, this is delicious. I can't believe I made it. Yes, you do have some talent. What's the matter? Have I got something on my face? No, Sylvain. Recently, I've heard rumors about you. Oh, yeah? Which ones? Is it that I'm terrible to girls? Or the rumor where I bring terrible misfortune to the girls I date? I don't, by the way, in case you're about to ask. Oh, I also heard about how I'm total trash and everyone should avoid me. That might be my favorite. Well, you don't lack for self-awareness. The way I figure it, if I can't be respected, I can at least be well informed. You are being described as indefensibly worthless. Indefensibly? <laughs> That's a bit harsh. I already knew your reputation concerning women, but these new rumors deprive you of all redemption. I did try to correct them, but I doubt I was believed. Well, thank you all the same. Listen, you don't need to worry what people think about me. As you well know, it's not easy to correct misunderstandings or change people's minds. <laughs> right. And she's like, yeah, well, yeah, relate to that. And if I'm going to behave so badly, it seems misunderstandings are inevitable. I could not be silent. You saw me as a person, rather than merely as someone from Dusker. I want you to be seen as a person, too. I appreciate that, Dudu. You think the world will ever see us that way? Maybe. I can't tell if you're joking or not, but I like it. Then we will get along. Ah, That was really nice. Both shunned by people for a variety of reasons. Think of people ever like us? <laughs> Do you think anyone who... Didn't see any beyond my C rank support. Is never gonna like me. Uh, I don't know, Sylvain. I don't know. You, you're kind of an asshole. It's hard, and uh, from the outset, you seem like a piece of shit. And there's nothing redeemable about you. I, I, I pity anybody who did all the other routes and didn't do this one and didn't get to see it and didn't recruit you. Yeah, you just get to do. You just like know what my real persona is like. All right, Gilburn to do. I think this should be an interesting one. Impressive that you made it back to do. It was you who saved His Highness from prison. We, all of us, thought you were dead. Okay, yeah, so this was... I, this is right. This one was actually locked off until, uh, just, just now, until, until Dimitri, uh, became more like his old self. And the same with, actually, Shamir, the, the next one. My wounds were severe, but I managed. So long as I draw breath, I fight for his highness. Is that so? But in my absence, you have protected him. Thank you, Gilbert, for returning to us. Stop. I left once. I have wondered if I will be forced to leave once more after this battle is done. Would you accept that? I imagine not. Of course not. You are still Gustav at heart, even now. I am not fit to replace you. Not yet. I still have a great deal more to learn. For now, all I can do is continue to be a shield for His Highness. I'm not the tank yet. Good, not a good enough tank. Like you to be so talkative. I could not be silent. So long as you understand, I will leave the kingdom someday. It may not be until the day I die, but the time will come. This war. I'm a much older man than I was when it began. Sooner or later, someone must take my place. Do not try to carry the weight alone, Dudu. There are many talented and well-trained officers. Work together with them to assure our king's future. Do that, and when the time comes, I will rest well. Thank you for the advice. However... Yes? It is too soon to treat you like an old man. You still have at least ten years of service in you. Fargus, no. His Highness needs you. As do I. 
Save the old man talk for when you are truly senile. <laughs> A fair point. There's no reason to let old age make one timid. Even as I work to surpass you, I still rely on you. Is that so? Well then, we have more fighting ahead of us to do. We should get to it. For the future of Fargus. Ah, that was nice. Do stepping up, man. Stepping up. All right. Similarly, this one didn't unlock till just now. So, Shmir to do. See what this is about. Dutiful as ever to do. <laughs> dutiful as ever to doodly dutiful. What are you suggesting? You're always busy delivering messages. You mean His Highness's orders? Does he need you to run such trivial errands? He should not trouble himself over them. I am honored to attend His Highness and to represent him in all matters. Ever since he saved my life, serving him has given me reason to live. Reason to live? Huh. Your relationship to the Archbishop seems similar. Not quite. Hmm? I joined the Knights to repay a debt I owed Rhea. The debt's been repaid, so she's nothing more than a former employer. Then you are not motivated by loyalty. It's like what he, she was telling Catherine. She's like, no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to die for this bitch. Not especially. I wouldn't call Rhea my reason to live. And if a higher paying employer comes along? I'd consider it. That's what mercenaries do. Then yes, we are completely different. Everyone's different. I'm not trying to criticize your loyalty. I wonder if they can have a romantic ending together. I bet they could. I remember the first one was really funny where they were both like just standing there not saying much of anything to each other. They're like, you're one a few words. You're a guy a few words. I like that. I like that too. We should hang out more often. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then they just walk away. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people like you all over the world. They don't tend to last very long now. Try not to end up like that. Thank you for the warning. They both just cut through the bullshit. I love it. God, so many ships. It's like, I form my own little ships here for everybody. Everybody! <laughs> you get an ending, and you get an ending! Um, Alright, Felix and Sedith. Let's do the final one, B-Rank. Hello, Felix. Training alone again, I see. Spying on me again, I see. It is not my intention to spy. I am merely concerned about you. I do not think you have been keeping your friends at a distance because you dislike them personally. Rather, I think what bothers you is their concept of proper knighthood. Is that not so? <laughs> you really have been watching me closely. You're correct. I don't understand why they revere knighthood. I won't be friends with anyone who believes in that nonsense. Do you feel that way because of what happened in the tragedy of Dusker? I have heard the story. Your brother was one of the royal knights. He gave his life to defend the prince. My brother was doing his job. My father is the real problem. When my brother's armor was brought back to the castle, do you know what he said? He died like a true knight. He died like a true knight. Chivalry begets the worship and glorification of death. Am I alone in finding that grotesque? <laughs> I suppose you'll excommunicate me for blaspheming like this. Not at all. I am not a knight, so I have no intentions of lecturing you about chivalry. So long as one's conduct is consistent with the teachings of the goddess, it is up to the individual to decide right from wrong. In that case, I'd like you to formally pardon me for not having friends. You require no such pardon. This is merely advice from an old man to a younger one. As unwavering as your convictions may be, the others also feel strongly about their beliefs. If you hate all those whose beliefs are different from yours, you will hate everyone eventually. People with exactly the same beliefs as you simply do not exist. You do not have <laughs> to change your beliefs, of course. But you do have to accept that others feel differently. That is my advice to you. I will speak no more of it. Sedith. Can I ask one thing? Why are you going out of your way to tell me this? Why bother with me at all? Because I trust you. Now that I've heard what you have to say, I trust you even more. I am also a rather eccentric person. I thought you and I might get along. I see. 
You've gone to so much trouble. I may have to start making an effort as well. Good. Do not take this the wrong way, but I hope you will surpass my expectations. Seneth has a fucking great ton of great supports. Damn. There's all of it. All of his is mostly like him, like digging to the root of a character's like issue, right? And talking with them about it. And it's just fascinating. Um, all right. I think I'm doing pretty good on um, support progress here. Like I've gotten a nice chunk of them done. With with that out of the way, it's gonna be mostly just B ranks now. Or I mean, I mean A ranks. There's a one part two B rank with Dudu. Um, part two B rank with Aloise. Yeah, basically just those two. And then everybody else has just A ranks. Almost there, guys. I think at the rate I'm going, I'm, I might be able to get them all. Of course, I have my A rank with uh, Dimitri. Let's see, today we got the Choir Festival and Golden Fish. Um, and the next week we have uh, Bitter Eats. All right, I think I'm gonna save um, exploration actually for the next week. So I'm gonna do some auxiliary battles. May far for some more supports, just so I can make use of the uh, the eat days. Because we have Bitter Eats, which is the bitter food, and then this one, which is really good, Morale Meals, which is just like, effects are enhanced when dying with an ally. So anybody right that's probably the best day to do uh, uh food bonding so anyway just like before i'm going to show you guys the highlights of these just just basically some of the level ups or if anything cool happens so uh, battle of the steel forest i really hope it doesn't mean this fucking fog here i'm probably gonna bring dimitri this first fight too just because i want to see if he says different stuff i think he probably will see you in the eternal flame oh no fog that's good interesting we're actually split up all right what does dimitri say now Leave it to me. Yeah, leave it to me. Okay, I knew it. <laughs> no more. I'll comply. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for that. <laughs> I don't need help. <laughs> Wasted effort. Level up, Catherine. Good I shit. Have... Ooh, premium magic herbs. What's that? Probably raise magic by one. Neat. Yummy. Level up for to do. Oh, no time to come on, man. Dude's getting some shit level ups too. Like, what the fuck? Ineffective. <laughs> Ineffective. Level up Shamir. Oh, nice. Hey. Never betray. Technique on horses. Never betrays. Level up for Gilbert. Damn it, Gilbert. On my honor. Oh, my honor. Okay. No more out of my way. See you in eternal flame. This battle is over. This battle's over. I swear it wasn't in vain. I swear it wasn't in vain. Level up for Catherine. Just let me. What fucking magic? Get that shit out of here! <laughs> I need some goddamn magic. Magic for pussies. Level up for to do. I wield this. Power. That's more like it. Damn. So when you turn a bit of a tank, man, he's got more defense than to do and, and Catherine have. Level up for Felix. Holy shit! Sorry, that's what I'm talking about. Level up for Dimitri. Level forty. Fuck yeah. I won't stop. I just won't stop leveling up. Level up for Flane. Nice girl. Okay. MP was Catherine. Woohoo! Level up for Seneth. God damn it. Level up for Casper. That's a win. Good we stuff. We must destroy you now. <laughs> we must destroy you now. Sorry. Boom. Level up for Mercedes. Good shit. Down. Level up for Casper. And I'll keep. And Annette. Nice. Level up for Shamir. Good stuff. Well, the news merge caught up by this point at least. Hey! I'm adequately trained. Mastered uh Warrior. Lord Wrath. Neat. I don't even know what that move is. Proceed That's hot. Level up for Catherine. Oh, fuck that. God damn it, Catherine. MVP was Gasper. Neat. Level up for Flane. Nice. Level up for Ingrid. Son of a bitch. Level up for Sylvain. Nice, man. Level up for Dudu. Nice. And Ash. Son of a bitch. Level up for Casper. Damn it. Level up for Gilbert. Ah, for God's sakes. Level up for Dimitri. More power. Level up for Dudu. 
the better. Good shit. Ta da! All right. MVP was Catherine. All right, did some good uh, support farming there. All right, let the council commence. And hey, Demetrius finally in here. Woo! Finally, glad you, glad you could join us, Dimitri. Don't choke on loose pride with me, boy. You may be my king, but I, but I am your superior as a god. <laughs> as if I could forget. Blah, blah, blah. All right, anyway. Oh, they don't do weeds anymore. Clearing the rubble, I see. That's actually different. That's what it used to be the weeding, right? I was like, damn it, Dimitri and uh, Dudu should do, their, should do that for all time's sake. All right, uh, Dimitri. Um, what do we work on now, honestly? Don't really need horsies anymore. Although I suppose I could. I'm getting close to B plus. I might get something, or I might not. Uh, I guess we'll just keep working on his spears. That was helpful. I'll do. Thanks. Thanks, Dimitri. I love you too. Oh, oh God. All right, Ash, get your support or authority leveled up. See, battalion desperation. Good boy. <laughs> All right, I guess we can go with bows then. All right, Sylvain, do we work on your reason or? Yeah, let's keep going with the reason. Hey. Or faith, I mean. Wow. Hey, wow. Hmm, hey. Oh, hey, I think I can actually. Okay, I swear to God, this wasn't here before. I think at this menu now, I can actually see classes. I, I don't think I could do this before. The only way I could do it is I had to go to down over here and go to goals to be able to see, go to the class menu. I swear to God, it was not here initially, which I gotta say, thank God that they did have that because that shit was fucking annoying. I was like, like, seriously, they, they really were not good with their menus though, outside of battle, like trying to figure out where shit was. Boom. Good boy. Boom. Good boy. There we go. B plus. Can't level up your authority, Cyril. Yeah. Time desperation. Okay, I'll keep going with the flying. Good boy. Aw, oh, shucks, Professor. Golly gee, Willikers. Oh my god, Cyril, calm down. Somebody got someone I, I just, I didn't even realize. I thought Marion was weak to the reason she isn't, so I should honestly be teaching her this shit. Here's some fucking other magic. Oh, hey, Blizzard. Oh my gosh, the first time I've ever seen that. I didn't even know that was in this game. Blizzard. All right, let's keep working on your authority, Annette. Nice. Okay. Let the lesson begin. May I ask a question, Professor? Uh, I want to knit an animal doll for someone, but I'm not sure what kind to make. They love eagles, lions, and deer equally. I don't know what to do. Is so, <laughs> Flane and Seth are both up here. Is it for Flane and Seth is like overseeing this shit? I want to make one of each. Try using an eagle's head, a lion's body, and a deer's tail. Put a deer's antlers and an eagle's wings on a lion's head. <laughs> uh, I think this one's actually supposed to be like what a griffin is, right? That doesn't sound. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Wow, well, whatever. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Curse out, Demetrius. Yes, I am. <laughs> As going. <laughs> Shut up and make it all thing. Ah, oh, finally. Still training. Indeed. But I was thinking about ending it here. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather. But I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. What wounds? The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Grondor. Her eyes were filled with revenge. Just as mine once were. Who was she? I don't know. I don't know. But I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. What are you talking about? I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. Are you okay? Why do they do it? It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. I have taken so many lives. And with each one, I face hatred, 
During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast and that young girl's brother. At some point, I must have... <sighs> that is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated. Because I stole and... Because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions, only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. Hmm. That's right. So, okay, I think I remember. This was from one of our earlier supports, right? There was like a moment where we had to like miss some kids. It's part of the job. I feel the same way. Yes. As one who chose to fight, it is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war. Until the day my life comes to an end. It is mine as well. We can confront together. Thank you. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Damn it, not gay enough. Ah! Ah! So good, though. But not gay enough. <laughs> needs to needs more gay. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I can only imagine. I bet, I bet if you were a girl, there would be a whole lot of fucking insinuations, right? Now nah, that that one was that one definitely felt more like uh, just pals. Unlike some of the other shit they throw in there, where like it's like, did anyone? I've never seen you smile like that. You're so hot, Professor. Like that one. I, I was expecting. I, I was expecting it. I was expecting they were gonna do it again, but that one actually felt less like it. But I'm going to bet the female one. You pick the female, they probably would have some shit. Oh my gosh, it's birthday. We actually have a lot of birthdays this month. Um, Take her to a teapot and we're going to Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, Annette, do I have any of your good tea? Sweet apple blend. Oh yeah, baby. Gotcha! Hello there. I'm here for a visit. I love this tea. Is it a favorite of yours as well? I just had a feeling because you a sweet apple girl. Thank you. All right, I want to get these right with you. Come on. Okay. okay. Fa favorite sweets. Don't even need to read anymore. Huh? Uh, mighty weapons. Insectivorous plants. Your ambitions. Your ambitions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Likeable allies. A strong battalion. The ideal professor. Likeable allies. There's an equation I've been thinking about. Can you help me with it later? Nod. Just nod, right? Nod. Yeah, yep. Thank you, Annette. Thank you for having an easy one. I love you. All right, time to observe you and poke you in your pretty face. Am I right? Oops. Professor. Professor. <laughs> Professor. Huh? I'm at my happiest when I'm digging into a sweet treat. Just like you, Professor. No, your sweet treat. No, your sweet treat. <laughs> oh, God, she's looking right I at me. I try to take good care of myself so that I'm in top form when it's time to act. Now you're already like a fucking god on the the battlefield. Seriously, you need to calm down. Stop drinking the tea. Uh. All right. All done. Thanks for the treat. It was so yummy. So yummy. Happy birthday, and I love you. To do, why don't you take a break? As the saying goes, the right person for the right job. <laughs> Don't eat the weeds, <laughs> Dimitri. Don't eat the rocks, Dimitri. <laughs> well, I'm already in the rock. Put this in your mouth. Oh, nothing. Put this in your mouth. Oh, fine. Spit it out. <laughs> That's a no no, Dimitri. That's a no no. I'm sorry. It's all right. Sorry, right. we're going to get you all fixed up, buddy. Leaving it to you may be quicker, Your Highness, but it would not be right. I was joking. Do not look so troubled. Let's work together and get this done. Your Highness, we've been working at this for hours, and we've yet to do anything. <laughs> You're right, we're just swiping the rocks back and forth. <laughs> just kind of doing nothing. Thanks to your help, Your Highness, we produced an excellent result. No, it was you who helped most. I hope we can continue to support each other. Good. <laughs> this was the greatest thing we could have possibly expected. Good. We. Oh my god, I didn't get anything. Damn it! You all failed my class. 
All right, how we doing? Uh, oh, by the way, I'm actually totally done now. Woohoo! Everybody's finished with me. Um, definitely got a few more, including the final one with Felix. Ooh, ooh, I'm fucking ready for this shit. This is gonna be interesting. <sighs> All right, a rank with Dimitri. Let's see this shit. I have a question for you. Answer quickly before my hand slips and I cut you in half. Always so ominous. Well, what is it, Felix? Sometimes you have an animal's face, contorted with anger and bloodlust. At other times, a man's with a friendly smile. Which is your true face? Do not waste your breath on questions with such obvious answers. They are both the real me. My father, my friends, Glenn. They all meant a great deal to me. And they were all brutally slaughtered. I alone survived. If I do not shoulder the anguish and regret they must have felt, who will? <laughs> so that's how you justify your atrocities. What do you mean? I will fulfill my duty to the late king. My old man used to say that over and over like a mantra. Hmm. Nauseating. No one seems to understand. It's interesting. I, I bet that's a, one, another reason why Felix is so sensitive to this, right? In addition, because like it, it we, and we saw it, Rodrigo in a lot of ways was a lot like Dimitri, which is, I think, why out of everybody, he was the one able to reach him, right? Reach into him and reach him in that dark place he, w he was in. Um, and also the reason probably why his death affected him so much. The dead won't acknowledge your loyalty. They don't care. What a load of bunk it is, pretending to serve a corpse. You're serving your own ego. You are wrong. No, I'm not. The dead are dead. The living are living. You have to respect that boundary. If you keep stringing gravestones around your neck, you'll snap. Even still, I cannot forget them, nor can I let them go. Then keep those thoughts to yourself. If you're too weak to do that, abandon your throne. Become a gravekeeper. Felix. I'm not immune to emotion, you know. Far from it. I haven't gone a day without questioning why my father and brother had to die while I survived. I'll bear this pain until the day I die, but I refuse to wallow in it. I have more important things to do than blubber for my whole life. <laughs> you know, Felix, you really are growing more and more like your brother. Shut up, Dimitri. Always so sarcastic and constantly looking for a fight. But deep inside, more than anyone, you... What are you getting at? Oh, it's nothing. But allow me to thank you. Your perspective has opened my eyes. <laughs> Not my intention. I couldn't stand the pathetic look on your face. That's all. I see. If you say so, then we will leave it at that. Hmm. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah, that's about, I think, the best they could ever hope for is really that just slight, at least, acknowledgement. Because Felix is just disgusted by Dimitri, you know? So, I mean, he gets it. I love, I mean, we already pointed out in the main story, the whole just, like, he feels like Dimitri is just, like, wallowing his despair, right? But, like, Felix is just telling him, hey, man, you, we're, we're all, we've all lost people. We're all hurting. But that doesn't mean it gives you the right to be act like a fucking psycho. <laughs> See you in the eternal flames, Felix. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Dimitri and Catherine, first part of their A rank. This I feel like might be interesting as well. That was delicious. Wow, I'm full. Nothing beats a big meal after a training session. Okay, what's up? You seem distracted. Oh, uh, my apologies, Catherine. I was just wondering whether you had any desire to return to Fargus. No, I haven't even entertained the idea. My loyalty lies elsewhere. No matter what, I'm going to find Lady Rhea. That's what I'm fighting for. All for Lady Rhea! All for Lady Rhea! May I ask why you have devoted yourself to Lady Rhea? It's simple. I adore her. Lady Rhea isn't just kind, but strong and courageous. I think she's a wonderful, beautiful person. More so than anyone else in the world. You want to fuck her, don't you? Wow. I'm not sure I can compete with that. <laughs> you can't. My reluctance to return to Fargus isn't about you, though. Ever since I met Lady Rhea, going back just hasn't been an option. That is a shame. 
I am certain Fargus could use your help in the near future. House Karen is one of the most sterling noble families after Fraldarius and Gautier. It would be reassuring to know that you had taken up your position as head of that house. Uh, is something wrong? You need someone who's like me, but more noble. You're so stern and serious all the time. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not going back. Besides, my father is alive and well, fulfilling the duties of House Karen. I have plenty of capable brothers and sisters who can take over after him. I'll keep serving Lady Rhea here, and you'll bring the kingdom together at the capital. We have to direct our talents wherever they're most useful and most needed, right? Well, I... Anyway, early day tomorrow. Don't want to stay up too late. You better go to bed. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean... Catherine is not really someone who gives a shit about, like, I think her own, like... Taking care of her house business and shit. It's like, nah, she's just too fucking crazy about Lady Rhea. I don't think we learned too much yet, but that doesn't feel like the first part to something else, so... Um... All right, uh, ooh, Catherine and Sedith at A rank. Ooh, let's see this shit. Take that, you goons, and that. No, Catherine's at it again. She has charged too far forward. I better join her before she. Are you all right? That's what I was going to ask you. How could you be so reckless? All those times you scolded me, and now you get yourself all beaten up. To think, nearly getting yourself killed in a minor skirmish like this one. <laughs> Quite right. Thankfully, I am not badly hurt. My apologies. I didn't mean to worry you. What's gotten into you? How do you mean? Don't play dumb. I was supposed to patrol this area, not you. What are you even doing here? Just... happened to be passing through? Sedeth. This isn't like you bumped into me on a stroll around town. Nobody passes through a battlefield. <laughs> oh, you know, stop for a leastly stroll in the middle of a deadly battle. All right. I wanted to protect you. What? You'd pressed much too far ahead. I feared your life might be in danger. Once that thought occurred to me, I could not stand idly by. I had to shield you from harm. And you were injured in the process. I don't know what to say. Sedith, I didn't realize you worried so much about my safety. I apologize. And I'm grateful. I guess we really are companions. I did not do this merely to assist an ally. I did it for you. I don't want to lose you. I... I... <laughs> Cal's like, whoo! Oh, she's winking too! And if I am willing to risk my life to protect you, just think how much scolding I am capable of. So you had best take better care of yourself. All right, you've made your feelings clear. When you say it like that, I can't refuse. I'm sorry for making you worry all the time. I'll be more careful. I promise. Please do. For my sake and yours. Huh, interesting. Okay, well, I, I went way more romantically than I was expecting. Hmm, okay, so that was the path they went with this. I, I was thinking it was gonna be like trying instead of trying to change her like ways of moving away from Lady Rab, although I suppose the point that that was impossible. That was not gonna happen, right? He realizes that. So basically, in order to like, overcome that, he's gonna throw himself in arm's way to try to protect her. But man, they, they do throw a lot of potential romances at you in this game. It's like Oh, uh, I don't know if I go with Seth and Catherine. Um, I, I don't know. Who would I want Sedith to be with? Um, hmm, I don't know. Maybe Sedith and, uh, Manuela, to be honest. I don't know. That was, I mean, they still have, I think, one more, right? Yeah, there's a second part I haven't seen yet. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, oh my God, Gilbert. And the final one with the net. Oh God, wait so long this demon moment. Let's fucking see it. Please patch things up, you two. Hello, father. May I have a moment? Of course. I... I read all your letters. You never stopped writing them, did you? Mm. My birthday, mother's birthday, every possible occasion, without fail. Yes. So why didn't you send any of them? If you had sent even one, we would have... Each time I thought to send one, I could not do so. 
Such behavior belittled my penance. Time passed, and with it my feelings of guilt toward you and your mother grew. Even though I wrote the letters, I could not send them. I would always talk about it with Mother. If only he'd write us, at least once, we'd say. I waited and waited. All those long years. I am sorry. I'm tired of hearing it, so just stop. Your apologies change nothing. Send those letters to Mother. She'll be happy to hear from you. I cannot. In that case, why don't I send them? I have given them to you. They are yours to do with as you wish. All right, then. I'll send them. You don't get to take it back afterwards. Father, you should know that they made me happy. Happy? Knowing that you were thinking of us all along. We were worried about you, Mother and I. Neither of us ever came out and said it, but we thought maybe you hated us. We're trying to forget all about us. Aww. Never. I swear it on his late majesty and on my homeland. I see. All right. Then swear. Swear that someday, when this war is over, he'll come back to us. I hear you, Annette. I will return without fail. No matter what. That's a promise you just made. If you break it, I'll never speak to you again. Yes. I promise. <laughs> Great. Now I'm positively elated. I can't wait until we're all a family again. Aww. I look forward to it, Annette. More than anything. Oh, fucking bad time, Gilbert, you sad sack of shit. <sighs> Good. I would really have sucked if we got to the end of that and still somehow they didn't patch things up. We're like, oh, God, okay. Thank you. Finally. Wait, so fuck longer the uh Oh, it's almost almost somebody's almost done. He's only got uh this one and then one last one with Felix. Um, um but alright guys, I think oh my god, I'm with the hundred thirteen thousand money. Gee, gold. Whew, got a lot of money from those fights. Um I think I'm gonna actually end things here for now because I know we're pretty far into this episode by this point. Um so save the supports for next time. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not ready to become Piggy Penguin. For the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.